Well, thank you very much, Mike. Hello again, everyone. This is the Cannabis News with Rick Thompson on 420 Post. Let's begin. Rick Johnson pleaded guilty to bribery and corruption charges in a Grand Rapids federal court yesterday. The former Speaker of the House and former Chairman of the Marijuana Review Board admitted his guilt in a scheme whereby wealthy industry players paid himself and his wife thousands of dollars to gain early advantage in the licensing process during the start of the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act, which was a 2016 law enabling businesses to serve the state's patient and caregiver populations. Last week, financier John Delale also pled guilty to the scheme involving free travel and kickbacks to Johnson and his wife. Next week, two lobbyists will have their chance to enter guilty pleas for their part in arranging payments from cannabis companies to the former speaker. Johnson will be sentenced at a hearing scheduled for several months from now. Johnson, who is 70 years old, is expected to get no jail time for his crimes. Part of the plea deal arranged between Johnson's attorneys and federal prosecutors is that his wife will not be charged and that Johnson will ask for a sentencing reduction at the upcoming hearing, which the feds will not object to. The criminal investigation is still ongoing. Insiders believe more people will be charged with crimes related to influence peddling within the state legislature regarding the growing cannabis industry. Johnson is cooperating with investigators. Two cannabis companies which gave money to influence lawmakers have yet to be named, and one of them is suspected to be Green Peak or SkyMint. The giant and state cannabis company is in serious financial trouble and been placed in receivership as creditors try to squeeze every penny from the failing cannabis company. Last week, SkyMint parted ways with their long-term leader in the face of the company, Jeff Radway. Some are speculating the departure heralds more legal trouble for Radway and for SkyMint. At the time of Johnson's crimes, Green Peak was throwing money at lawmakers and local officials as they tried to establish laws and partnerships in order to create a monopolistic stranglehold on the emergent industry. There will be more to come. Well, yesterday, the Michigan Cannabis Industry Association held their spring event at the Kellogg Center in East Lansing. Hundreds of cannabis industry and community participants attended, including Anquanette and Jamie and myself. Notable speeches were made, including one from Rep. Kevin Coleman, who revealed to the audience he is running for mayor of the city of Westland. Coleman is in his third and final term in the state house and has been a valuable co-sponsor for some pro-cannabis legislation introduced in the last few sessions. Senator Jeff Irwin came directly from a Senate committee meeting and encouraged attendees to remember where they came from and to envision the future of the cannabis industry. Longtime cannabis lobbyist Kevin McKinney related a few stories about the state's lobbying industry, emphasizing that some people have become far too casual in the way they ignore regulations and some of those people may be soliciting donations or favors from current cannabis industry companies. Be warned. Act Labs founder Bob Miller introduced a new truth and testing program, a concept whereby cannabis testing labs would agree to adhere to common standards and methods in exchange for being recognized by the industry as a lab which is doing it right. That recognition will come as a logo or an image placed on cannabis packaging indicate the test results of that product are more trustworthy. Hostess and MC Robin Snyder did a fantastic job of making the event work well, as she always does. Kudos to her team. And here's looking forward to the MICIA Summer Annual. Well, final story for today is another one, unfortunately, of greed. Everyone knows April 20th is the cannabis industry's national holiday, Sales for cannabis products go through the roof on that day. Every cannabis retailer wants to be open on that day, but what if you haven't received your official license to operate from the city yet? You probably just stay closed, right? Well, not if you're Jars Cannabis in Monroe, realizing that Jars doesn't even have their name on the building yet, according to WTVG, nor do they have a license to operate retail, but they pop those doors open on 420. Now, that came as a surprise to their neighbors in the strip mall, in which they're located, and also to city officials. 
Jars is now accused of three violations, including operating a special event without a permit, installing improper and unapproved signage, and violating the city's noise ordinance. The headline on the Channel 13 Action news piece is, Michigan Marijuana Shop May Lose License After 420 Event. And you know what? That might very well be true. The council in Monroe is meeting on Tuesday night of next week to determine the punishment facing jars for trying to game the system to grab some 420 profit.